Like most investors, I am glad to see the back of March. After temporarily surpassing 40% in gains for Q1, many areas of the market suffered a huge correction, bringing our gains for the year to around 24%. Despite a negative month in March, if you had told me at the start of January that I would have grown our portfolio by an average of 8% per month in Q1, I'd have happily accepted. Yes, the recent broad market sell-off has been sharp, but I've been here before in 2016, 18 and 20, and I believe that this will once again be nothing more than just a standard blip on a journey to reaching our long-term financial goals. In this video, we'll quickly cover three things. Firstly, why the market may have pulled back. Secondly, how it can actually be a good thing for long-term investors. And lastly, what changes I'm making to capitalize on the recent market activity. Let's kick off then with the recent drop in the market so that we can better understand why some stocks have plummeted up to 60%. Because if we understand why it's happened, then we can make better decisions on which stocks to hold and potentially learn to position ourselves better for future corrections. And there will be future pullbacks or recurrences like this. In fact, the market goes through three, five to 10% corrections per year on average. And this one has been slightly bigger, but that is to be expected given such a profitable year that most investors had in 2020. 20. Moving on to the key reasons for the recent correction then, I believe it was triggered by a combination of three or four things that will whiz through now. Number one is what is known as a market rotation. During this correction, we've seen investors rotate out of expensive growth stocks and into what we consider value names within industries like retail, restaurants, airlines, and energy. These industries have suffered through the pandemic and many believe that they reached rock bottom levels and have become really undervalued versus expensive tech stocks given the upcoming reopening of the economy. Number two is rising bond yields. With bond yields recently rising to 1.7%, this has enticed some low risk funds and private pensions out of stocks and into safe 1.7% interest rate of bonds. Third is tax selling. The end of the tax year has literally just passed and many investors will have used March as an opportunity to sell certain positions to reduce their capital gains tax as this is extremely common. Lastly, the fourth reason for the recent volatility is the increasing amount of retail trade Retail investors continue to pour into the market and a lot of them are just here to gamble. Many are over leveraged, under researched and impatient and many cannot handle a standard 5 to 10% correction and they quickly fold which further exacerbates any sell-offs. I'm personally not too worried by any of the four points above. Firstly, value investors will be itching to switch their outperformers within retail, restaurants, oil and gas for our industry leading stocks within gaming, biotech and clean energy. Secondly, I don't think that the 1.7% interest that 10 year bonds offer is something that's going to attract the majority of investors away from stocks. Also, the time to sell for capital gains has now passed and lastly the weak hands that are giving away their shares in the likes of unity and lemonade at 90 dollars are without doubt making a big big mistake so that's what's happened but what are we going to do what is the plan well yes i would love to have sidestepped this correction but even the greatest investors have given up trying to do this every single month even week the media speculates about why the market is about to crash from the Greek crisis, Brexit, Trump, war with Russia, Iran, China, COVID record debt or unemployment. Basically, the media will always find something for you to worry about. And if you'd sold up and sat on the sidelines every time there was cause for a crash, you would just end up missing out on some huge, huge gains. For example, if I had switched defensive in January when stocks were supposedly at their most expensive, I'd have been gutted as I watched my stocks move another 40% higher before the eventual correction. By remaining invested and slowly building a cash position as the markets rose, I am entering Q2 24% better off than if I tried to outsmart the market. The only problem with remaining invested is having to get used to watching your investments drop once, twice, or even three times per year. But this is something you're just gonna have to get used to. And that's why it's important that you only invest what you can afford to lose and you only consider stocks that match your risk tolerance. For me personally, I'm happy to invest aggressively in growth stocks that I believe will outperform over two to five years, knowing that they will almost certainly experience 20 to 30% corrections along the way. I'm not, however, confident in my ability to handle fluctuations greater than 30%. 
and therefore my portfolio is somewhat diversified with a mixture of small, medium and large cap tech stocks to try and limit the volatility. If you struggle to handle the recent turbulence, then perhaps you should look at a safer and more diversified portfolio or ETF. Right, lesson over. Here are the major changes that I made to my portfolio in March. I took advantage of the recent drop to add three new positions, and the first of which is CRISPR Therapeutics, one of the top gene editing stocks and the leader within the CRISPR space. The stock recently dropped 40% from its all-time high, and I took this as an opportunity to broaden my exposure to the gene editing sector. I also added a stock called 22nd Century Group with the ticker XXII. 22nd Century offers investors a different way to gain exposure to the growing cannabis market. This biotech company is currently famous for using patented technology to grow nicotine-free tobacco, but right now they're waiting for regulatory approval to use their plant-based tech to genetically modify cannabis plants to improve breeding techniques cultivation and THC control. You can find out more on 22nd Century Group in my recent video where I cover my three favorite cannabis stocks and I'll put a link in the description below. The third new stock I added to my portfolio was music streaming giant Spotify as it was trading 30% from its all-time high when peers like Tencent Music were at their peaks back at the start of March. Therefore, I decided to trim my position in Tencent Music and diversify my allocation to the music streaming space by adding a small position in Spotify. So I added three new stocks to the portfolio, but I also increased my positions in six of my favorite stocks that I already own shares of. I ramped up my exposure to gaming stock Unity. It's now my largest holding, and you can check out the five reasons why I think Unity is an excellent investment in the description below. Second up is InsureTech company Lemonade, which has suffered a huge share price correction, and despite still being expensive, it is a lot more fairly priced for a startup that has a huge industry and global footprint to grow into. The third stock that I meaningfully increased my position in is Danish giant Orsted. They are the largest energy company in Scandinavia and the stock now pays more than a 1% dividend after its recent correction. It's not easy to find a safe and secure dividend within fast growing industries. So to me, Orsted looks like a great opportunity to add a little bit of stability to your growth portfolio. I also added to my shares in Chinese gaming giant Do You, and now the stock has pulled back Pretty much everything that I talk about in my previous video on Do You is once again accurate, and I think the stock represents a good long-term opportunity, so check that out. Over the past couple of weeks, I also made Netflix one of my largest positions. The stock has underperformed with the rest of the stay-at-home stocks, but Netflix is not going anywhere, and I think they have a couple of tricks up their sleeve that will continue to fuel growth for many years to come. The last stock that I added more of is video game publisher Take-Two Interactive. And that's because other than my large position in Unity, I have a lot less exposure to the gaming sector than usual after taking profits in 2020. And the recent broad market sell-off was an opportunity for me to regain exposure to the space. Moving on then to the stocks that I reduced exposure to, and there's only one worth mentioning, and that's MasterCard. The payments provider is trading at a multi-year high based on its multiples and I worry that innovation in the payment space may one day disrupt MasterCard and Visa's duopoly. I also closed one position entirely and that was British airline EasyJet. I first added EasyJet to the portfolio when the stock fell to $500 during the pandemic but now that it's doubled I am exiting my position and reallocating the funds to some very bruised tech stocks. As you can see I've been doing a lot more buying than selling as I'm taking advantage of a number of stocks that are trading at a very steep discount to where they were valued just a few weeks ago. Having been through many corrections in the past I've learned that this type of selling is temporary and can be exploited and therefore as much as it hurts to watch your stocks fall this is just part of the process and you have to get comfortable with it if you want to invest successfully in the stock market. So after a month that's involved many more trades than usual, I believe our portfolio is really well balanced to somewhat protect the gains that we've captured in Q1, whilst ensuring that we're well positioned to continue benefiting from the mega growth trends for many years to come. Not only do we have exposure to a number of these growth industries, but I'll continue to analyze and identify the best companies within them. So click subscribe and stay tuned for my upcoming videos on the best gene editing gaming, cannabis, and blockchain stocks. Remember guys, I'm not a financial advisor, so this is not financial advice, but hopefully you found the video interesting. And if you did, please click the like button. It really helps the channel. And if you're looking for somewhere to start investing, then you can sign up to eToro, which is the platform I use via the link in the description. And you can start copying my portfolio for free. It's fully automatic and it means you can benefit from the stock market exactly the same way I do without having to put in any of the time or effort. So if you want to sign up, you can join the 1,700 investors who copy my portfolio for free by clicking the link below. I will get a small referral fee, which is pretty cool, but honestly not the reason that I make these videos. I've got loads of cool ones lined up, so stay tuned and remember that your money should be working for you and not the other way around.